words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Do I have any uh, Star Trek fans out there? Yes. Okay. I, I didn't say Star Wars, I said Star Trek. I know there's a difference. I happen to like both. And, Me too. But when it comes to Star Trek, I've liked actually all of the ones that I've watched. I'm, the original was good. I pre probably have a preference for Next Generation. Deep Space Nine is okay. Voyager eh, is okay. And I don't have CB, or I do have CBS on demand, but I don't have time for whatever that new one is. Maybe I'll binge watch it in the summer. But the one consistent of all the Star Trek ep um, series is the transport, the ability to transport. How many of you wish that if all the technology in Star Trek, that one would come to the year 2000? You know, just, you can avoid traffic. You'd sit there, I gotta get here, just beam my mark coordinates, boom, I'm there. Or perhaps if you land up in the wrong place and go, yeah, beam me up, Scotty, no intelligent life here, I'm gone. <laughs> but the thing that always amused me the most with it is when they were about to get clobbered by an alien, they could say, now. Get me out of here now. And just when the aliens thought they had them, bye-bye. <laughs> Again, the ability to just get out of a bad situation fast. Anybody ever had that feeling that there's times that you find yourself in a situation you would rather be anywhere else? And if only you could just be and get quickly, get the guys in the ship to get me out of here. I have a feeling that's a real human experience, isn't it? Regrettably, uh, that technology has not arrived yet. And I doubt we're going to see it in our lifetime. But boy, if it was there, wouldn't that be great? Of course, the gospel today, Jesus reminds his disciples, you're not getting the transporter. As a matter of fact, I can't do anything to take you out of the world. But I can't ask God to do this. I can ask that you be protected from the evil one. Jesus, of course, right now we're in between the end of the Easter season and Pentecost. How many of you knew what Thursday was? Ascension. Ascension. How many of you were in church on Ascension? Oh, good. <laughs> How many of you like, were Episcopalians, Father Zelly? You didn't offer us an Ascension service. <laughs> but those of you who are, grew up Roman Catholic would know that that was one of the big A days, wasn't it? You, you were supposed to be in church. I know that it was a big A day because I had a funeral at Flynn and Ford's, and there's a big Roman Catholic church, and the parking lot was full, but there weren't that many people at the funeral. So I reminded myself, yeah, ascension is happening today. And of course, the thing, all of us, though, profess that we believe in the ascension. We say it in the creed. He ascended into heaven. But this is sort of before the gospel today, addressing, before this happened, saying, I'm not going to be around much longer, fellas. I need you to understand that I'm not going to be able to fix every fine mess you find yourself in. And I'm not going to be able to take you out of situations that you'd rather not be in. But I can do this. I can say that my presence, maybe not physical, but at least spiritual, will always be with you, asking you to stay with it, to walk through it. To not be overwhelmed and not to just say, hey, let's just fit in better in the world. As Christians, we are told that while we are not of the world, we are in the world. And for me, that means how I choose to behave, how I choose to interact, makes all the difference in the world. I can't, I wish I could just live in a gated community where it was me, myself, and I and a few other select people. I don't get to do that. As a matter of fact, there's going to be times that God's going to put into my life folks who drive me insane, folks who will perhaps I drive insane. But because we are in the world, we have to know how to work with these folks. We have to learn how to moderate our own behavior so that while we may be in a frying pan, Jesus can maybe turn it down to a simmering point. But the alternative to the frying pan is the what? 
Fire. I'll tell you what, I'm sticking in a frying pan any day when I'm jumping into a fire. So there's the other thing, though, that Jesus says at the end of the gospel, that we've been sanctified by truth. And there's that gift of baptism that we're given, isn't it? That because we have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever, it is that that can protect us from evils that are beyond our control, things that we want, may want to call evil but probably aren't, and to learn how to coexist in a way that we are not overwhelmed. Perhaps God makes us all to be like weebles. Remember what a weeble does? It wobbles, but it does not fall down. I think that's an important thing, maybe as Christians who have to live in a world where there are a lot of people trying to knock us over. That is, we are actually weebles, walking through it because of the sanctification and the gift that Jesus Christ has given us. He didn't give us that transporter, though I'm sure there are going to be times on any given day when we wish we had one, whether it's because we're sitting in traffic or we're just finding ourselves in a situation that feels out of control. But in those moments, I find that it's my faith in Jesus Christ, the ability to understand that I have been sanctified by my baptism, that helps me to endure, that helps me to say, I'm sticking with it no matter what. Father Weeble may wobble, but he's not falling down. Ed the Christian will continue to walk with everybody else who wants to keep walking, sanctified by truth, but know that because I'm still in the world, it means I got to function, but I never have to say the world's ways are mine. Amen. Amen.